I tell you what, as we walk through this old world, sometimes we get caught up, sometimes we get swallowed up, amen? God will tell us something to do, and boy, we'll sit there and just be stubborn and hard-headed. We'll go the opposite direction. We'll run away from it, amen? I've been guilty of it. I knew I was called to preach when I was 12 years old. I didn't start till I was in my 30s. That's about right. That's about right. We all hard-headed, amen? And we get caught up, swallowed up in all these things of life. But no matter what we do, God is always God. Yes. He'll always be God. He always has been God. And He'll always be in control of it. Amen? Amen. So the Lord would have us to have this message this morning. Uh, don't get swallowed up. Amen. Don't get swallowed up. You will look with me in the book of Jonah. Jonah chapter number 1 and we're going to begin reading in the first part of the chapter chapter 1 verse 1 Praise you, you turn real fast you miss it amen, amen. Jonah chapter 1 verse number 1 when you find your place if you will and if you're able please stand with us in reverence to the reading of God's holy word He's worthy of all reverence, worthy of all praise. Amen. We ain't standing up because we read it. We're standing up because it's his word. Amen. Amen. Jonah chapter 1, verse number 1. God's word says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee under Tarshish. Down to, from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea and there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship. And he lay and was fast asleep. Amen. We just talked about somebody sleeping in the, in the, in the, in the boat. Amen. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him. What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. If so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. And they said every one to his fellow, come. And let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Then they said, said they unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us. What is thine occupation? And whence comest thou? What is thy country? And of what people art thou? And he said unto them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid, and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he had fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. Then, they, then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wrought and was temp temp tempestuous. And he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to the land, but they could not, for the sea wrought and was tempestuous against them. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done it, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Amen. Let us pray. 
Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for this day, Lord, and every day that you've allowed us to have. Lord, we thank you for the multitude in your house this morning, Lord. Both the members, the visitors, Lord God, we thank you for each and every one of them. And Lord, we just ask you to speak to their hearts today, Lord. Lift their spirits, replace their joy. Lord, if there be any chains of bondage, Lord God, that you would break those chains and set them free right here in this place today. Yes. We rebuke and bind Satan out of every situation, yeah. out of yeah. every heart, out of yeah. every mind, out of every household. We yeah. rebuke him and bind him in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we claim your blood over our lives, over our circumstances, the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. Because we know the power that is in it. Lord, I ask you, hide me behind the cross, Lord, that you would be seen and heard. That only your holy name would be glorified and uplifted in this place. Have your will and your way among your people, Lord God. Let this word go out and fall into the hearts of the ones who need to hear it. Lord, we've all turned away from you. Lord, we've all walked the opposite direction as what you've told us to. But Lord, today as you've given us this message, Lord, keep us from being swallowed up. Yes. Let us realize before it gets to that point, let us realize that we need to turn and come back to you, Lord. Yes. Or we need to turn from that place of walking away and come back to the path that you've set before us. Lord, we love you today and we thank you for everything you've worked so far in this service. Hallelujah. But Lord, we know you're not done. Yes. So we ask you to keep working in the hearts and the lives of your people. Yes. Let your Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit be, be multiplied in this place today. Yes. Let each and every one feel your presence, Lord God. If they haven't yet, Lord, let them feel it before they leave this place so that they will realize how real you are. More real than anything we see, more than, more than anything we touch, you are the realest thing we know. Lord, we give you all the honor and all the glory and all the praise in this place today. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for everything. In the precious and holy name, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we ask and pray all these things. And all God's people said, Amen, amen and Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> now the Lord led me to this scripture today because I want to exemplify something to you. That if you get out of the will of God, Amen? If you get out of the will of God, if God has set this path for you and, and he's shown you the way to go and, and he's tried to get you to put down roots and, and he's tried to show you exactly what you need to do in your life's journey and you run away from it, amen? amen. You turn away from it, you shy away from it, or you just halfway do it, amen? amen. Then you are endangering yourself because God is going to have his way. Amen. He created you for a purpose, for his purpose, not for your purpose. He created you for his purpose and to complete that purpose, to run the race that he has set before you. He didn't create you to be a, a, a multimillionaire because that's what he wanted you to be. The only reason he'll ever make you a multi-million dollar person is if it serves his purpose. Amen. Amen. People think that they have their own agendas and their own wants and their own ways and, and what they want to do. But the fact of the matter is God created each and every one of us in his image and for his purpose. And the same is true for Jonah here. So God comes to Jonah and he says, hey, I need you to go down to Nineveh and I need you to preach to these people. And Jonah says, I'm not going down there to Nineveh. Them people's crazy. If I go down there and try to preach to them, they're going to try to kill me. God said, I'm going with you. Amen. 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 Now here's the problem. We doubt God. When God tells us to do something and we see it as a challenge or, or we see it as an obstacle or we see it as, as something that may be even impossible, we don't think about the fact that God is going with us. Right. Amen. Amen. If God is with us, who can be against us? God is going with us. So God had told Jonah, here, I'm going with you. Jonah said, I don't care. I'm not going down there with them crazy people. Matter of fact, I'm going to Tarshish. So he gets himself a boat, he pays the fare, he's on the ship. Well, guess what? The word says God sent a great wind. God brought a storm. Amen? God brought a storm. 
So realize that if you step out of the will of God, if you know for a fact God wants you to do this thing and you stray away from it, God's going to send a storm. Amen. 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 He's going to try to get your attention before he swallows you up. So I don't know about you, but if I had been Jonah in that position, I surely don't think I would have been down in the, in the ship asleep. Amen. I'd have been up there praying, Lord. Whatever it is, I'll tell them, hey, y'all need to turn this ship around. Take me back where you got me from. I'm not going to Tarshish. I'm going to Nineveh because this ain't looking good. Amen? Amen. Amen? But let's just be real and honest. We ain't the smartest people. Amen. We're hard-headed. So even though the storm may be raging, we say, oh, you know, it's just a little storm. This too shall pass. Right? We're not wise enough to say, okay, God. I get the hint. I don't want you to bring the full force. I'll, I'll take the hint. Amen. Amen. Oh, not Jonah. Not only is he not taking the hint, boy, he's so comfortable he's down there sleeping. <laughs> so sure enough, they find out. Jonah tells the truth. He tells them, hey, this is my fault. So they cast Jonah over the side of the boat. Amen. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I picture myself being out on the sea in a storm raging. And, and I don't know if you've ever watched Deadliest Catch or anything like that. Man, them swells, they can get 40 and 50 feet tall. And I imagine that this was a pretty severe storm, amen, because God sent it. Right. So they throw Jonah overboard, and I imagine myself being in that place. Now, I can swim, but not that good. <laughs> So I imagine myself, if I had got thrown over the boat, that would have been the end of Jason. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But see, God wasn't going to let that happen. A lot of people think that the great fish came just to take Jonah where God told him to go. But can I tell you, God also saved his life. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. 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 Yeah. And God didn't save his life because Jonah was good enough. God didn't save his life because he knew Jonah was just hard-headed and wouldn't listen to him. God didn't save his life because he, he knew Jonah was weak and, and Jonah couldn't, couldn't overcome the fear that he had of going down to Nineveh to do what God had told him to do. He didn't save him for any other reason other than God had a purpose for Jonah and Jonah was going to complete that purpose. That's good, preacher. Look with me in Jonah chapter 2 right there. God's word says, Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. Amen. And said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me out of the belly of hell, cried I, and thou heardest my voice. For thou hast cast me into the deep. In the midst of the seas and the floods compassed me about all thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. Yet will I look again toward thy holy temple. The waters compassed me about, even to the soul. The depths closed me round about, and the weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption. Oh, Lord, my God, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord yes. and my prayer came in unto thee yes. into thine holy temple. Yes. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy, but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish. And it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Amen. Right in Nineveh, where God told him to go to start with. Amen. 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 So today, God wants us to know that when he speaks to us and he tells us to do something, amen, just like our daddy has told us growing up, you can either learn the easy way or you can learn the hard way. Amen. And the hard way is not going to be fun. No. Come on. 
So is not our father much greater than our daddy, amen? That when he says, you're going to learn the hard way, or you can learn the easy way, the sad thing is most of us want to learn the hard way, amen? We want to go down the long, hard road through the thorns and the thistles, through the briars and the blisters. We want to have all the turmoil that we can have. I don't know why we like it so much. Amen. But rather than taking the easy road and saying, yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Well, I got plenty of time. Come on. Who gave you that time? Uh -huh. How do you have plenty of time? You see, Jonah had the opportunity to just be an obedient servant to the Lord. When the Lord said, Jonah, I need you to go down to Nineveh, he should have said, yes, Lord. You're in charge. I'm your humble servant. You say go to Nineveh. I, I, I'm not crazy about the idea. Them people down there, they're crazy. But at your word, I'm going to Nineveh. Because I know you're going with me. Amen. 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 But so many times God tells us to do something. And we shy away from it. We turn away from it. And then God sends the storm. And we don't understand the storm. And, and we come into the house of the Lord and we say, oh, preacher, I'm going through something. I don't know what's going on. And the whole time in the back of your mind, you know exactly what's going on. Amen. You know exactly what's going on. You know that you've turned away from God. You know that you've not listened to God's voice. You know that you have strayed off of the path that God had for you. Yes. You know that God spoke to you directly uh -huh. and said, go do this or go do that. And you had your own agenda. You had your own things you wanted to do. You wanted to be what you wanted to be. You didn't want to be what God wanted you to be. Oh, amen. Amen. So God sent the storm. And now all of a sudden, here you are. You're just like Jonah was. Boy, I'm sitting in this fish's belly. I don't know if I'm going to live. He's probably getting ready to digest me. Come uh on. -huh. <laughs> Jonah didn't know if he was going to live or die. But ain't it great that we serve a God that regardless of how many times we fail Him, regardless of how many times we fall short, how many times we're disobedient to His Word and His command, that if we just cry out to Him, if we just realize the error of our ways, and we say, Lord, you know what? You was right. I was wrong. I don't like this place I'm in, and I know I'm here because of myself. But so many people, they can't see the forest for the trees. They get in that place of disobedience. They get in that place of God sending the storm. And hey, some of them even get to the place of being swallowed up by the fish. You so say, wait a minute, Pastor, I ain't heard about nobody getting swallowed up by, by a whale here lately. <clears throat> no, but you heard about a whole lot of people with a monkey on their back. Come on. Oh. Yeah. Ain't much difference. Come on. Amen. Ain't much difference. You get swallowed up by the world. Amen. You get swallowed up by sin. You get swallowed up by disobedience. You get swallowed up by the enemy. Who will take you farther than you ever wanted to go. So far that you think you can't come back. That's good. That's right. That's right. But right here in the book of Jonah, we see here Jonah who should have perished when he got through overboard. He should have drowned. Amen. Been fish food. Amen. Amen. But not only did he survive, God preserved him. Brought the fish to swallow him up. To save him. And also transport him. So God said, well, you know what, Jonah? I've heard your cries out of the belly of that fish. I've heard you crying out to me and repenting for not doing what I told you to do. So not only am I going to save your life with this fish, but I'm going to use that fish to transport you to the place that I told you to go anyway. And he's going to spit you up on the shore right in the place where you would have stepped your foot off the boat if you would have done what I told you to do to start with. That's our God. Yes. So many people want to say, oh, I don't know why God's putting me through this. God's not putting you through anything. 
anything. He gave you clear direction. He spoke in your heart in that small, still voice, and he told you exactly what to do. But us and our hard-headed selves, we think we know better than God does, and we want to make our own way. So rather than going straight to the destination on the easy path that God has paid for us, we got to get thrown overboard and swallowed up by the fish. And sit in that place where the storm's raging and we don't know if we're getting ready to get digested. We don't know what's getting ready to happen. All we can do is just cry out, God, I don't know why I'm in this place when really you do. But Lord, please deliver me. I'll listen to you. Amen. And how many times did our daddies tell us and how many times have we told our kids this is going to hurt me more than it hurts you. And I used to tell my daddy, I don't know, it was my butt. It ain't yours. <laughs> but now I'm a daddy and I understand it. I understand why my father brings things into my life to keep me on track. Amen. 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 And I promise you that it hurts him more than it hurts you. Amen. Because he loves you. He don't want to see you hurting. He don't want to see you suffering. Why do you think he told you what to do to start with? He's trying to make it easy for you. I mean, he's done all the work. If he wasn't a loving God and a sovereign God and an omniscient and omnipotent God, if he was not the God of love, then man, we would have all kinds of things to do to get saved. Well, you need to go get your hair cut. You need to go get your $300 suit. And them shoes, brother, they just ain't going to cut it. You need to go get some of them. And uh, you need to sit on that end of the pew, not on this end of the pew. And here's all these stipulations to you getting saved. Okay. <laughs> but you see, God, he didn't do that. Amen? He said, come as you are. Yes. Right. He said, come as you are. Come into my house. Gather yourselves together. And lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. For whosoever believes in the name of Jesus Christ shall be saved. Right, right, right. Amen. Now let's just face it. We're all going to make this mistake that Jonah made. We're all going to get swallowed up. We're all going to get thrown overboard into the sea. We're all going to wind up in those storms that we don't know how to get out of because we're hard-headed. But there's an old wise saying that if you don't learn from your mistakes, then you are destined to repeat them. Right. Come on. So the first time you make that mistake, hey, God will give you credit. So, well, maybe my child maybe didn't know. The second time, God's saying, all right, I've tried to teach you. Come on, you you're bringing something on yourself because you're going to learn. Amen. Amen. You're going to learn. One way or the other. And not because God is mean. Not because God wants to bring these things against us. But God wants to teach us. He wants us to be what he created us to be. Amen. This world, this enemy that we are surrounded by is trying to deform us. Trying to mislead us. Trying to redirect us. When we've got a road map, most of you's got it laying in your lap right now. Amen. Don't get swallowed up by the world. Amen. Amen. Hold on to God. Listen to His voice. And when He tells you to move, you move. When He tells you to stay, you stay. When He tells you to go to a certain place, you go to that place. And not only will you avoid the storm being cast over, and being swallowed up by the fish. But God will pour out a blessing on you through your obedience that you cannot even contain. Hallelujah. He'll reward you. That's the God we serve. So these things in your life, sometimes, you know, I see people all the time. Pastor, I don't know what's going on. I'm in the middle of a storm and it just keeps coming, it keeps coming, it keeps coming. Well, have you searched your walk? Yeah. Have, you, have you looked at the path you were going down here in the recent past and, and seen a, a deviance from it? 
Was there something that God wanted you to do that you didn't do? Because that's where you need to start. You need to turn around and go back to that place. And say, all right, God, I, I see where I messed up right here. Okay, I'm going to take care of that. I'm going to get that straight. I'm going to talk to this person. I'm going to do this work. I'm going to give this person something to eat. I'm going to give this person something to wear. Whatever it was that you missed out on, go back. Amen. Ain't you glad we can go back? Ain't you glad that God's not like us, boy? Somebody does us wrong and we just write them off. Uh -huh. Well, I see how he is. I ain't even going to speak to him no more. I forgive you, but I ain't going to forget you. Oh. Ain't you glad we serve a God that not only forgives us, but forgets about it. Yes. Amen. He's not going to keep reminding you of it. He's not going to keep throwing it in your face. He throws it in the sea of forgiveness. Yeah. To never be remembered again like it never happened. So maybe you're here today. Maybe you feel swallowed up. Maybe you feel cast overboard. The Lord's saying today, search your walk. Are you listening to my voice? Where did you get off track? Why did you get cast over? Why did you get swallowed up? Go back to that place. And fix it. And then you can carry on from there like you should have to start with. Amen? Amen. If you would, I'd like to ask you to stand this morning. With every head bowed, every eye closed. God loves you today. He wants the best for you.